Yo. Yes. Happy Friday, y'all. October 1st, 2021. Half cast 147, episode 147. Let's do it. Let's have a little fun going into this weekend, y'all. We made it through another one. Have a fit and free Friday. <laughs> You got your drinks, get your drinks ready. Yeah. You got your blunts, you got your apes, your quarters, whatever. Roll that shit up. You had a good week. Set your paper aside for your bills. Of course, I have a few things to reflect with you guys. Mm. Sick. That beat is so dope. So, um, yeah, and I'm working on myself because <laughs> I get uh, I get out of work. Uh, I go to the store. I go to Seven Eleven. You know where it always happens? That Seven Eleven. I go to Seven Eleven, and um, so the kid, the kid behind the register, he's a good kid. It's me. <laughs> it's me. I swear it is. So I hand him a, a a bill, and he's playing. He's he's playing. He doesn't fucking. He think and we cool, man. Like yeah, we I. Right. We ain't buddies, but we I. Right. So he plays like, oh yeah, that's it. That's your change. He gives me like a dollar back or something, and I'm like, yo. And I'm looking at. He's smiling like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a good night. I'm like, yo, if you do not give me my. <laughs> Son, this is not the time to be playing. Give me my goddamn change so I can go to hell home, man. <laughs> I've been somewhere where I don't want to be for a whole fucking nine plus hours. And you mean to tell me this is where it stops at with you for another five minutes playing around? No, these are not the games to be playing, young man. <laughs> Give me my fucking change or I snatch you over this damn counter. See, I never see. I'm working on it, man. <laughs> Yo, I got some. He's a good kid, honestly. He just he's in he was in a better mood than I was. That's all it was. It wasn't me. Uh I got some, I got a few stories for y'all. <laughs> Woo! First up. Give me my goddamn change. New Jersey superintendent vows change after stomach turning lunch meals go viral. We failed the next. We failed the generation that came after us, because <laughs> we were supposed to have went through that, so y'all didn't have to. But apparently, <laughs> now what? Two generations, a generation and a half later, they're finally putting the discussion on the table. Because oh god, I can still taste those meatball subs on like Wednesdays that they would. Uh, come on, man. You know, fool kids. Kids have a weird way of telling you when the food is no good. And you know what they do? They don't fucking eat it. <laughs> they put it in the little plastic spoons and use it as projectiles to uh, hurl at other children. They, they've, wep they've weaponized your lunch meals <laughs> because they refuse to eat it. It's beneath them. Even animals. You know animals know when things are not meant to be eaten. Even starving ones. These what the kids were telling you for so many generations. Patterson Superintendent Eileen Schaefer is promising to better to provide better meals after stomach turning images of showed what was being served to students for lunch. Jeez, Patterson, New Jersey. Oh, we're back home. It's never good news back home. <laughs> Schaefer and members of the Board of Education spoke about changes to the district's food services. Uh, vowing change. Wow. When I saw those pictures, I said it was unacceptable. Schaefer said, I also said I wouldn't eat it. And if I'm not going to eat it, neither are my kids going to eat it. Well, that's fair enough. God, there was a significant backlash after the photos of unappetizing school lunches went viral last week. You know what it is now? Because uh, phones, 
kids got cell phones. People could take pictures. Pictures don't take an hour to develop or you don't have to like, yeah, yeah. Cameras are in the hands of everybody, not just a chosen few. And yeah, that that has to be one of the major breakthroughs of, I don't know, at least the past, I don't know, 20 years, maybe. It's just the fact that instant photos. Yeah, just think about that. In fact, you overcooked something. We're not serving it, Schaefer said. We're going to do it again. What are you going to recook? <laughs> how many times can you rook? How many times can you rook? Can you kill a raccoon and skin it before lunch? Oh, uh, that is a very good thing. She said, My kids actually wish I was the school lunch lady because it's horrible. I think all oh, my school lunch ladies were cool. Uh, while they're giving to the kid, what they're giving to the kids, the guys in prison eat better than that. <laughs> How would you know? <laughs> The annual budget in Patterson is $18.5 million for food and the labor, uh, a number that's astounding to grandmother Francisca Nunez, who couldn't even figure out what was on the viral lunch tray. <laughs> Disgusting, deplorable, she said, with millions of dollars that are coming into the city of Patterson, I think you should do better. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, what was, who was that? Michelle Obama was like, yo, these lunches are crazy. What are you giving these kids? Like, yeah, the best thing we would have maybe is the uh, we have a cheesesteak. And but that meatball sub, I can still taste it. I ain't been to school in like 20 years. <laughs> that shit, that's the stuff of nightmares. And you uh that 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 taste of bile when you feel like something is coming back up, that's the taste. It's a memorable taste. I'll never forget that. Next. Go. Harvard poll. Drug price negotiation is Americans' top priority. So what I get from this, and I really I'm far from Harvard, right? But what I get from this, just reading that top line, and of course we'll go through it, but uh, is that drugs have become so lucrative in this country, especially prescription drugs, opioids, have become so lucrative that they had they're just naming their own price <laughs> that it's like a blank check written to be so you want to make it affordable so everybody can get their hands on it because that means more money please i hope i'm wrong with this americans support letting the government negotiate drug prices above all other major priorities in infrastructure and social spending packages now before congress according to a new political harvard poll that suggests healthcare is at the top of most re respondents' minds. Okay, so what? But the drug pricing plan could be in peril as some centrist Democrats spar with Speaker Nancy Pelosi over the scope and the details. Well, they got like prescription drugs for like your heart, which is only like four dollars. Like, yeah, prescription that is, yeah, okay. Uh, Democratic leaders are now considering scaling back a House leadership back proposal. Or dropping it entirely from the 3.5 trillion social spending package. So what are you going to do? Not give people medication because it costs too much, or like, or stop having these uh these these companies uh price gouge you by uh dating by dating all the local drugstores and seeing who could give you a better deal. Wow, the polls the poll signals that despite uh, President Joe Biden's Build Back Better agenda, a week. <laughs> You got a whole staff, man. <laughs> Couldn't you think of something better? Like, what this is what you all came up with? Jesus. And and weeks long debates about the economic recovery. Americans are still most concerned about issues that impact them directly. Uh, said Robert Blinden, a professor of health policy and political analysis at Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health, who designed the poll. Uh, uh, asked to choose among 20 policy priorities, 39% of respondents picked direct government price negotiations with drug manufacturers first. I don't know about that. Like, that was followed in order of preference by increased federal spending to prepare for pandemics. Okay. More resources for long term and home based care and extending Medicare to include dental, vision, and hearing care. All of the proposals are clue in the sweeping $3.5 trillion 
uh, social spending package. This is a hell of a conversation that we have. If you're in this part of legislation, like, wow, like what's more important? Yeah, like you can't skimp. Uh, a sick country can't work for you. So a sick country that can't work for you can't put no money into the country. And oh, God. Yeah. Wow. Only 23 percent of poll respondents rank rebuilding roads, bridges and airports. Extremely. That's infrastructure. We need that. Extremely important. So, yo, I can't that everything is extremely important. How can you turn down one thing? Like the one thing you turn down when it breaks down, everybody's going to be on your ass saying they told you to fix it. <laughs> and just 15 percent said high speed internet in rural communities was vital um i would that is very important now having high speed internet is because in emergencies like dispatching emergencies and communications to places that really like will otherwise have poor reception or like a poor signal, like you need to get somebody out there for God knows what. That is, that's important too, but yeah, wow. And key provisions in the $500, wow. Who I would, this in, in school, we was taught that politics means money. That's all politics mean in its simplest form. That's what it means. And when you say politics, this is exactly what they're talking about. Is sitting around the table and divvying up. You got this much money, and are you going to like what goes to what? Uh, you can't make everybody happy. Wow. Get them nasty ass lunches off the board. So we got enough money to do that. I know we got that. <laughs> hey, right, come on. Come on. Newark woman says self proclaimed sovereign citizen subjected her to paper terrorism and tried to steal her home. Now, a sovereign citizen, or uh, they do not, um, they don't abide to the laws. They proclaim to not abide to the laws. Like you hear talk, uh, talks about some of them like reject their social security number and tax statuses, and they don't recognize like the uh, whatever. I think they only recognize the uh the Ten Commandments or something as the only laws like yeah which is which is cool which is cool but you gotta play by house rules sometimes <laughs> like they believe that and this is in the constitution you see uh certain spots they got like I can't really explain explain like they feel like they should be able to travel freely uh across borders with no driver's license because they're American citizens which I I do remember seeing that in the Constitution and stuff. But a woman bought her first home in Essex County only to have someone she never met try to steal it. Now she wants others to beware. It can happen to them. <laughs> Can't happen to me, baby. Because if somebody tell me they got, uh, take me to court and have a judge. Yeah, whatever you say, you print it up on paper. Now, I mean, here's the thing. Here's the thing with this, uh, with this organization. And um, is that like you have your set of rules, right? And that's fine. That's all. But I'm not into what you're into, so I don't give a damn about what your rules say. Now, <laughs> I don't. First came one letter, then another. This is somebody trying to like, yeah, come on. The letterhead said they were from the Al Moroccan Empire Consulate at New Jersey State Republic. The first thing I would have did was Google that. Let's see what that is. Both were sent to Shanetta Little, the proud new owner of a home in Newark. He gave me like a notice basically saying he was going to possess the house because it's his ancestral land. You can fuck off. Uh, Little said, my realtor said it's a scam. Don't worry about it. This is literally someone trying to steal my house with papers that they printed at Kinko's. He was just seeing if you were going to bite. Yeah, I don't care what you believe in. You're not taking my house. Whatever papers I sign beats whatever papers you're signed. If not, if you don't believe that, then I have something else that says this is still my house. <laughs> then the author of the letters went to the home with some other men in, with the with some other men back in June. He introduced himself to neighbors. They're like, "Hi, I'm your new neighbor, and I'm just changing the locks." Said Savita Ram Rotten, who lives in the neighborhood. Oh, what? Little showed up at our home, which is under renovation. He was like, "What are you doing here? Can I help you?" 
a uh, little said, eventually the man locked himself in. SWAT teams and the bomb squad showed up. Hey, this got, hey, this got deep fast and were there for hours. They had to kick the door down, said Ron Rotten. This guy has been had been linked to an extremist group, said little, oh man, maybe, hey, maybe it's a good thing you brought attention to these people because maybe they were trying to get your house to set up some type of fucking base of operation. Jesus, this guy has been linked to an extremist group, said little Hubert John 39 was eventually arrested. North police, this is like, yeah, this sounds like some type of offshoot militia type of shit where they just tried to uh Newark police said John claimed to be a sovereign citizen citizen of the Al Moroccan Empire and that his status permitted him access to the property. See that's all well and good <laughs> but <laughs> like you you have to be recognized as a sovereign property at by the United States government also you know what I mean so you can't just come you can't just come and say like you can't just come and plant your flag somewhere and say that it's mine. You know what I mean? Like there's like there's checks in order where that you have to go through the proper channels and avenues. Like, yo, if you wanna if you wanna build a ranch and have your boys train like uh, rifles, it's your property or whatever, the United States government will allow that. But you're just showing up on people's property and saying that this is my ancestral home. How? Where? No paperwork, no nothing. He just said it's <laughs> big balls energy. Just said it's my house now. <laughs> but you waited for me to pay for it first. <laughs> yeah, I placed the Moorish flag in the window. <laughs> you ain't turned not one light. You ain't fixed not one busted step. <laughs> They said the house is under renovations. You ain't putting out a check, not a nothing. You just wait for it to all get done. Now, all of a sudden, this is your ancestral property. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Little said she was a victim of paper terrorism. It's a long time practice. Unfortunately, it plays out across the country, said Rachel Goldwasser with Southern Poverty Law Center. Uh, there are people who have decided that they no, no longer fall within the jurisdiction of the United States. That's what I was trying to say earlier. Yeah. With the United States of America and its laws. And that's fine. That's really fine. But you're subject to the laws. You can't just, <laughs> that's, that's property. That's property theft or whatever, or burglary or whatever. That's trespassing. That's whatever in no paper in whatever you believe in is all well and good. But in the law, you're fucking trespassing. This is somebody's property. Little said it didn't end with John's arrest. He was back in August passing out flyers to it. Why are you fucking with my house, though? It's just my house. You It's my house on the block. So you mean just my little piece of land right here is, oh, I would be cursing him out. Like, yeah, it would come to hands probably. Like, so you mean to just tell me that it's a house next to me and it's a house on, on the other side of me and it's a house across the street and you got property all around here, but just my house, my area is the one that's subject for you to say it's your ancestral home. No. Ancestors mean that that shit was here before there was anything, before there was any development or anything. So if you won't try it with them because they're not bullshitting and you're not trying it with them, you pick me out the fucking bunch. Oh, get the hell off my property. I wouldn't, no way. That I committed fraud to get my house and the truth would be coming out. <laughs> That's when you'd be like, oh, well, take me to court then. No. <laughs> A lot of people told her she just she she should just sell the house. No, that's what they want. But little who pulled herself out of homelessness says she's not backing down. That's good, man. Please don't back down for these people. Yeah, they wait for you. Yeah, yeah. So who was in the house before you got it that they were uh, beating down the door telling them to get out? And who was there before them? No, I worked so hard for it. I'm not just going to let some random person who feels entitled to what I work for just take it or scare scare me away from it. That's what I'm talking about. She said the home had been vacant before she bought it, and that's why she thinks John targeted it. Little, yeah, well, if, if if you wanted the house, you and your sovereign, whoever the hell, or y'all should have put up a couple bucks on the down payment and bought the goddamn house. I uh, mean, like, you wait till somebody else put their bread up. Now, all of a sudden, it's yours. Get the fuck out of here. Little worries he'll return, but she said she'll have security measures in place. That's what I'm talking about. 
Uh, John is charged with criminal mischief, burglary, criminal trespass, and terroristic threats. Get the fuck out of here. How's somebody going to wait for you to... Yeah. I mean, the house been sitting there all these years. <laughs> the house been sitting there all these years. Now, all of a sudden, you see somebody moving in. Now, all of a sudden, it's yours. That's really fucking childish. Yeah, nobody wanted it till I moved that motherfucker. Next up. <laughs> Professor removed from classroom after claiming he lowered grades over mass refusal. What happened here? After setting a mass mandate in his class, so he set the mass mandate, right? Okay. University of Northern Iowa biology professor Stephen O'Kane was removed from the classroom and forced to continue his continue teaching his class online for the rest of the semester. Hell yeah. I would have been like, okay, yeah, I don't want to wear a mask. And Monday through Friday, Monday through Thursday, you're in my class. And Friday through Sunday, you fucking little germ factories are all uh, kissing on each other and partying. <laughs> and then you want to step foot back in my class and just breathing and yawning all over the place. They'll put all the goddamn back. Take 10 points off your grade. Why not? At least he tried it. I uh, man was removed from the classroom and forced to continue teaching his class online, which I would have, I would have, I would have been like, yo, can I teach online? They would have had to make me teach in the classroom. It would have been as backward. It would have been backward for me. Like, yeah, I'm looking at the picture. They all on top of each other. Not nobody not wearing not one mask. Yeah, the professor told students they wouldn't receive lab points for that day if they came to class without a mask which violated the guidelines set by the Iowa Board of Regents prohibiting all public universities from requiring masks or vaccinations on campus. Okay. All right. Then I really would have been, no, I like my job. I'm a tenured teacher here. I'm a tenured professor. And yeah, and I'm still under contract. I'm going to keep my job, but I'm going to teach online. Yeah, just online courses. There wouldn't have been no argument. I knew what I was walking into. You told me up front. Know what I mean? So I would, yeah, yeah. He was kind of out of pocket for that because he already knew the rules. He knew the rules before he even decided to pull that shit. But I feel where he's coming from. Know what I mean? Like, O'Kane told the Ames base outlet that this is not a battle of me wrestling with the UNI administration. The president, the provost, the dean, my faculty chair could not, could not be better people. They simply are lovely, lovely people whose hands are tied Bunch of cowards. You can see him slamming the door. <laughs> Bunch of fucking cowards. They all feel the same way I feel, but none of them will goddamn stand up. Goddamn mask on. Okay. <laughs> Added in an interview with the Gazette. The answer is yes. He said, I'll stick with the mask requirement. Okay. Who has been with the university for 26 years. See, you don't want to give that up. You know, like you throw that all out the window, express that doing so would not jeopardize his career path saying i'm just one two three years from retirement oh yeah come on man i would sit on that computer uh just wearing just wearing drawers and crocs <laughs> with a shirt and a tie from the from the <laughs> from the chest up <laughs> and for the next two years and fuck between classes have a couple coronas and man and just sail out these one two three years just ride it right on out if i were to be terminated this would not ruin my life. I told the provost, most of us, most of us somewhere in our lives have a hill they're willing to die on. And this is one of my hills. I'll tell you. The University of Northern Iowa told Newsweek in a statement that the college is deeply committed to the health and safety of our campus community. Not saying, yeah, openly telling students that it's cool to rock without a vaccine. If you're not going to rock with a vaccine, okay, that's cool. But damn, at least wear a mask. Can you do that much? I mean, <laughs> yeah, like at least cut, at least uh, meet us halfway. We go to the basics on the board of regions, but yeah, you pay thousands and thousands of dollars in tuition. I can't revoke your uh your your. I can't I can't say you can't come to school because you won't get a vaccine for religious or whatever purposes. I can't do that. But goddamn, at least I can make you wear a mask. Shit. <laughs> Her process in place uh, to address violations of university and board of regents policy, the statement said, uh, after an internal review of actions by a single faculty faculty member, 
The university has taken appropriate measures to uphold uh, compliance with those policies on campus. They added, and these are we. Th this is like slightly uncharted territory. We're still trying to figure out the right way. Because some people are with it, some people are not. Some people down with the vaccine, some people are not. It's just fucking divided. Delete that. How we doing on time? Tell me I gotta leave my motherfucking house. You fucking crazy as hell. After I done put the money down for this shit. Upstairs. <laughs> I'm mad for her. And I'm not even involved in it. <laughs> Upstate New York woman admits fatally stabbing estranged husband's girlfriend with large kicking kitchen knife and senseless, brutal, and violent act. Oh, here's a love triangle. Here comes Amber C. Aikens, 40, courtesy of the Greene County District Attorney's Office in upstate New York woman on Friday pleaded guilty to fatally stabbing a woman who was in a relationship with their estranged husband. Now, estranged means that they're not together, right? Estranged means that they're not together. The Greene County District Attorney's Office uh, announced... <laughs> It's not funny. It's fucked up. Amber C. Akers, 40, a resident of Sauger Keys, pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and the death of 39-year-old Crystal L. Bourne. The plea was entered before. She doesn't love you! <laughs> Let me show you! <laughs> she doesn't. We're meant to be together. The plea was entered before Green County uh, Court before Judge Terry J. Wilhelm. State police responded to a call at Bourne's residence located on Lake Mills Road in Cairo in the early morning hours of May 14th. Bourne's neighbor reportedly called 911 after hearing a screaming coming from the home and finding Bourne pleading, pleading profusely. God damn. At, yeah, upon arriving, what are you doing here in the first place? Whatever relationship. If you think we're going to get back together, killing my girlfriend <laughs> just makes me believe that I that Yeah, it just confirms that you're crazy. And I did the right thing by getting the hell away from you. God, the only thing saving me from getting stabbed by you was this girl, because <laughs> that is fucked up. <laughs> Shoot. Upon arriving, first responders found an unresponsive Bourne's blood-soaked body near her front door. She was pronounced dead at the scene. Not the only one for you. Officers with the New York State Police found Aikens and took her into custody less than two hours before. What? According to a report from Kingston-based newspaper, uh, said that Aikens went to Bourne's home at approximately 1 a.m. First off, we not talking relationship problems at 1 o'clock in the morning. I'm sleep or I'm doing something other than sleeping where I don't feel like talking about no relationship. When the door swung open, Aikens allegedly thrust the knife into the left side of Bourne's chest. Oh, she was thinking about that all day. Yeah, not even an argument or nothing. Just walk in and just go straight to it. A forensic pathologist determined that the knife caused the laceration of Bourne's uh, left axillary artery. That sounds bad. Yeah. Uh, Prosecutors believe that Amber Aikens and her estranged husband, Christopher Aikens, were in the process of trying to repair their map. <laughs> it wasn't happening enough. It wasn't happening quick enough for her. She just thought she'd just speed things along a little bit <laughs> and cut out the middleman. The, the catalyst for the attack came when Amber learned that Christopher was seen born at the, hey, man, I just got to find out yeah, if I, if I want to be here. Yeah, a little... uh. <laughs> According to this version of events, prosecutors said, however, that Christopher had not told Bourne anything about plans to repair, repair his marriage with Amber. Get the fuck away from me, you crazy broad. Yeah, Donnell Jones. The case, this case amounts to a horrible tragedy, especially given the fact that Crystal Bourne was led to believe that the relationship between Christopher Aikens and Amber Aikens had long ended. It did. It just didn't end for Amber. <laughs> Christopher already had her way like a dot in the rear view so far back, but she <laughs> she clearly had a, a wide sights on him. Had long yet some people.
that I was saying this uh, yesterday. This was last night when the young boy stabbed the girl after she broke up with him and said, oh, yeah, I just some people don't care whether you double or not. Some people don't care if you're together or not. They just don't want to be the one that felt that they lost you. Now, nah, man, they want to be like, yo, you lost me. I didn't lose you. I nah, mean, some people, it's an ego thing. It's a pride thing. Like, yeah, because if you really, really thought that you and that man or that woman was meant to be together, you wouldn't be killing somebody. <laughs> there wouldn't even be a third party for you to even be worried about. Man. But uh, if time tells us anything, if just history tells us anything, make sure when you cut these people off, that they cut off, that they know they're cut off, that they understand that they're cut off. Even if you got to like, put up a, uh, even if you got to get like a little restraining order or something, I don't know. Like, yeah, damn, I guess I'm just not that, <laughs> I'm not that magnetic enough for somebody to kill my new girlfriend. <laughs> oh shit, yo, I am going to wrap this up. If you like the podcast, if you like the show, uh, like and subscribe, hit the notification button and I will talk to you guys very, very, very soon. Adios.